<laughs> Next up, we went over to Rockingham Land Rover Experience to catch up with friend of the show and Land Rover Defender Driving Supremo, Ed Cobley, to find out what he's been up to recently. Who Ed Cobley is? Um, so you've probably heard of my father, Vince Cobley, um, and we have been off-roading all our lives. Uh, and I've been born and bred throughout the off-road scene. I've, I've driven for companies such as Bowler Motorsport. Uh, I've done a lot of work with the BBC car programme Top Gear, uh, Fifth Gear. But my passion is, is, is Land Rovers uh, and certainly the Defender. It's been a big part of my life and it's made me who I am in many ways. And today we're going to be talking about the new Vortex system uh, on the 2.2 and possibly on some 300 TDIs as well. The Defender is such a synonymous vehicle. It's been around for many, many, many years. And I have two very small, important people in my life now that still see the Defender as the only Land Rover out there. Um, some of the places I go in the world, Africa, Tunisia, Eritrea, you're driving a Land Rover, you get such a great feeling of people saying, that's the first car my father ever seen in Africa. So any mods we can do to that to make it more environmentally friendly, uh, perform better, um, make the temperature of the engine cooler, and, and make the driving experience better for that customer. Let's do it, let's do it. I was skeptical initially, I must admit. Then I met a guy called Steve Laws, who was a customer, who came in in his Land Rover and was very enthusiastic about the Vortex system. And I will be honest, initially I sort of a, a shrug of the shoulder, I didn't really believe it, and we spent the whole day in his own Land Rover. And I was blown away by the, the linearness of the torque in the 300 TDI, and I've spent many years in a 300. Uh, I love that engine, I really, really do. I was quite surprised in the performance of the vehicle on the road. It shocked me um, as we did a car swap. He drove mine back, I drove his. Um, and I was really surprised in the overall performance. I haven't had enough time with the Vortex exhaust to honestly say the fuel economy increase. And I will put my hand up and say, when I get an exhaust that does something different, I probably use the right foot a little bit more. So I'm not going to be the person you probably want to speak to about emissions. The off-road capability and the... A lot of people seem to think we want big brake horsepower. Um, actually, we want a very flat, big torque curve. Um, and that's what the Vortex is helping with. The sound is different, the performance is better, the emissions are better, the fuel economy is better. What more is there really to say? I mean... So that was our day out with Ed. Um, one of the things that, well, a lot of the things that Ed uh, was talking about there was exhaust, and that, that really got us thinking. Uh, we've heard various claims from exhaust manufacturers in the past and in all honesty I really struggled on the surface to find out why, why an exhaust which really happens after all the power has been produced and delivered would make any difference whatsoever to the performance of your vehicle. So well we did the only thing we could do was we went out and found out for ourselves. The product itself started uh, in racing. Um, we had a company where we used to uh, develop race engines and reprofile camshafts, etc. So we under understood back pressure and by altering dwells, we had issues with rally cars not running smoothly at low RPMs. So we decided to develop a system um, that would reduce back pressure and you know, eventually we came up with this which is a brilliant uh, reduction in, it was much better than we ever, ever assumed it would be. Um, and it was purely for racing. Outside of that, um, we then discovered we was getting improved fuel economy, much better performance, much more than we ever assumed, and drops in emissions. And from then it just developed into a different product. Um, now we're currently working on trains, drones, military vehicles, we've done ships, we've done all sorts of uh, issues. <laughs> Vortex itself um, is a product which reduces back pressure and by reducing back pressure you get a much more efficient engine. Um, there's no downside, no downside whatsoever. Um, we specialise in redu by reducing the back pressure it's only a benefit all the way through, so you'll get lower emissions, more power, and save your fuel. 
Um, the concentration um, from engine manufacturers and OE um, is a number of things. Um, reducing emissions by putting filtration, um, catalysts, all these products block up the exhaust system. Um, by doing that, you're making a less efficient engine. Um, and traditionally, it, after the catalyst or the DPF, um, for a long time now, there's the rest of the system is just down to silencing, which is where we've focused with uh, Vortex at present. Um, and by doing that, we're accelerating the gas away from the engine, which there is nobody else out there uh, that can compete in this market. Information on this um, is now fairly uh, worldwide information that anyone can pick up on the web um, and particularly US uh, websites for years they've been preaching the fact we need to reduce back pressure to get a more efficient engine so if you took something like a header a tune set of headers which is always been used in racing and all that uh, all, all those products uh, what they derive from that, um, it's all to reduce back pressure. By fitting the system on, generally um, all our customers, they come back satisfied with this and they, they, it's driver noticeable, so they're getting in the vehicle, they're understanding that the acceleration is coming in a lot earlier, particularly on turbocharged vehicles, um, so you, you're reducing back pressure there, so the turbo will cut in a lot earlier and rev to a high velocity. Um, on the back end of that, um, the experience, and we ask for the feedback, is, is monitor your fuel consumption. In general, you know, we get around about 10%. Um, it's very unusual we get anything below that, and if it is, it's a few percent. Above that, you know, we get some people come back with some real uh, important gains. Um, if you've got emission testing equipment, you can do a simple before and after test and uh, you know, generally we do that here when we fit the systems and you can see a significant drop in emissions. Because you're taking the stress off the engine, um, then the engine will run much more efficient and taking that stress off um, over a period of time, you, you will end up with a benefit in the servicing areas. During the time that we shot that piece with Vortex, they kindly fitted this Vortex exhaust to our Defender here. Now, I'm not sure what I was expecting. I certainly wasn't expecting some of the claims that were made by Vortex's marketing people, but I, I really grilled the guys on the science of it. It was really difficult to understand how the gains that they claimed could be made. But there was one sure way of finding out. And as the guys fitted this beforehand, they took an emissions reading of this vehicle with a standard exhaust on, absolutely nothing really wrong with it. Um, and once it was fitted, they took another emissions reading on the same machine in the same location with no altered settings. Um, and the emissions were reduced by just under 30%. Now, that in itself was pretty impressive to me and once we went through the science of it to understand what was happening that all started to make a lot more sense since that time we've had the opportunity to to drive around with the vortex exhaust for well, just 2,000 miles now and we initially replaced the vortex exhaust with no em just so we could get some test readings on it to find out what the, the economy was how well the vehicle towed uh, and just a general feeling of driving. We put the Vortex exhaust back on and took a load more measurements. Now I will say that we're not scientists here, but when a vehicle is your daily driver, you do get used to how it feels, how it performs, particularly when it's under load, if it, things are full in the back or you're towing. Um, and there are a number of observations that we can happily and surprisingly report back. First and foremost, is as soon as we got in the vehicle, the, the drivability, and this is, this is somewhat intangible, but you'll have to take my word for it, the drivability of the vehicle was very different. It felt far more like a car than a Defender. And 
That happened for a number of reasons, which we, which we managed to figure out along the way. And then in subsequent phone calls with Vortex, managed to, to find exactly what the reasons were for. But by reducing the back pressure that's, that's in there, what we've effectively done is get rid of a lot of the engine braking. Ordinarily, if you're driving uh, an older Land Rover vehicle around, or an older vehicle of any kind, when you take your foot off of the, the pedal, the vehicle engine brakes quite hard. And that, in some respects, can be quite useful in Defender. However, once you remove that back pressure and you take your foot off the gas, it carries on going, and it carries on going for a lot longer. Um, when, when the guys at Vortex were first explaining that this might be a side effect that uh, we get, I, I wasn't expecting it to run on as much as it did. And it's massively beneficial when it comes to fuel saving. And I think that might be how all the fuel savings are made. The fact that it rolls on so much means that the engine isn't under load a lot of the time. Now, for fuel economy, I confess at this stage, for quite some time we didn't see any improvement. And that's partly because of the power delivery. This vehicle had, before we owned it, at some point had the fuel pump messed around with. And I've always quite liked that little bit of extra power. It doesn't blast smoke everywhere, but it seemed quite pokey. With the Vortex exhaust on and the exhaust system being freed up, the power was significantly quicker to come on. There was more power at the low end and it pulled right up throughout the rev range. This, A, was a bit of fun, a lot of fun, but it really made a difference when it came to towing. And that was our, our, probably the biggest thing that we noticed. On towing, particularly when you're uh, on British motorways going up and down hills, it's not uncommon to drop down to 55 mile an hour or so just because you haven't got that power and having to change from fifth to fourth quite a lot. Similarly, if you're going up back lanes, going second, third, fourth, up and down the gears. The Vortex, by removing the back pressure element of it, certainly has made a difference. The vehicle will crawl up hills a lot better. You can stay in third gear particularly, you can stay in third gear up most hills without any problem. Uh, and on the motorway, you don't need to drop down from fifth gear anywhere near as often because the low end torque really seems to be there. Now, one of the one of the things that I've been uncomfortable with uh, is how to talk about this when it seems like almost, uh, I don't want to say miracle product, but it seems a bit too good to be true, which is why we've put this exhaust through its paces so much. But I, I have to say the proof is there in the pudding. The guys at Vortex are doing various demonstrations and are able to replicate pretty well m most of what we've tried on the vehicle and though Vortex are sponsoring this show, I will also say that, as they are aware, our views here on Land Rover's Live are our own. Um, to date, I've seen no detrimental problems or, or anything that I didn't like or felt uncomfortable about with the Vortex system. It's a stainless steel exhaust, which means it, it won't rot. Um, for some people, you may or may not like the engine note. It's, it sounds a bit more racy than a standard Land Rover does. Um, the direct fit products that are now available are, are really good because it means you, obviously you can just fit them yourself. The one we've got here is the direct fit Vortex system in the middle of the exhaust and very kindly they'd handmade the rest of a stainless exhaust for us as well. But now we've driven it for quite a while, we just jumped back into another Defender over there to, to have a drive around in it and that loss of drivability is really noticeable and actually now we now we're we take for granted how drivable the vehicle is it's very difficult to ever go back now for more information on vortex uh, do check out their website and as we mentioned earlier in the show throughout September using the promo code LRL you'll get 30% off all vortex direct fit products so please do check them out that supports us here on Land Rover's Live and ultimately it'll support your vehicle. Um, in truth, I could wax lyrical about this exhaust for a lot longer than I have. I'm conscious that I can go on a bit anyway, but for those of you who are interested, we are going to do a live Q&A in the next coming weeks. So please do comment with your comments below and uh, 
I'm going to be looking through some of the older forums who've for people who've who've taken pot shots at various different products, but this one in particular, to try and dispel some of those myths where it's possible and see if their claims hold up as well. Um, do subscribe. Uh, we aim to come back to you with more videos in the coming weeks. As I said, we'll be doing the Facebook the the live Q and A. Uh, in the interim, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. I'm a bit rusty, but uh, it's good to be back. <laughs>